Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today we've got a powerful insight looking into the prophetic word of God on the two olive trees. Now, this was t these two olive trees have been prophesied by the prophet Zechariah and again by the apostle John in the book of Revelation. But who are and what is? the two olive trees. Well, we're going to take a strong look into the scriptures because I believe that we're living in the time now that the two olive trees are going to be, uh, soon appear on the scene. Folks, we're, when we say it's the last days, that's exactly what we mean. And there's so many prophecies that are now being fulfilled that Jesus Christ is imminent return is upon us. So stay right there. I'll be right back in just a moment. Every year we see records for hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, volcanoes, and floods. Is Earth spiraling toward human extinction? extinction. Our Climate Chaos webinar Climate examines chaos. all these alarming trends, why they're increasing, and what we can do about them. Plus, Paul Begley explains their end time significance. Now you can have the entire Climate Chaos webinar on DVD so you can explore the facts in more detail. Go to paulbegleyprophecy.com to order Climate Chaos on DVD. All right, folks. All right. The two olive trees. Okay. Let's take a look at this. We're going to take a look into the prophetic word here. We're going to go to Zechariah chapter 4 because the prophet Zechariah, you know, he talks about several things in this chapter. And when we talk about two olive trees, you say, what's the big deal? Because the two witnesses of the book of Revelation are called, God even calls them. Jesus says, these are my two olive trees. And there's nothing in the New Testament that hasn't been first prophesied in the Old. That's, that's why I'm saying the New Testament is a fulfillment of the Old Testament. And so let's take a look at this. So you go to Zechariah chapter 4, and the Bible says this, And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, and a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are up upon the top thereof. So what Zechariah is seeing in this uh, vision is the menorah. He sees the menorah with the seven branches, uh, that uh, certainly would be setting in the holies, uh, uh, very important, because in the holies, of course, would be the uh, shoe bread table. It would be the golden altar where the incense went up into heaven with the prayers of the saints, and it would be the golden menorah. And those branches were lit every day. They, they, they kept burning. They were to keep burning. They kept putting fresh oil in them every day. They represented it. Later you'll find out they represent the seven churches of Asia, Asia Minor. Uh, so the Lord has set this up perfect plan. So when he set up the Old Testament, he was thinking of the New Testament. He was thinking of the, the New Testament church when he was establishing the Old Covenant. And so this is what Zechariah sees. He sees, and you know, now today, if you go to Jerusalem today, they have the menorah. It's already, it's solid gold. It has the seven branches. It sits in a bulletproof glass, and it sits outside on Mount Zion, uh, looking right toward the Temple Mount. It will end up in the Temple Mount when the third temple is built. It's made of solid gold. And so whenever you go to Jerusalem, you just walk up and take pictures of it. There it is. Uh, it's, it's an incredible sight. Well, God says, I want you to look at this menorah. And that's exactly what Zechariah sees. But if you go to verse 3, it says, 
and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and upon the left side thereof. And I answered and spake to the angel with that talk with me and saying, what are these, my Lord? I mean, why are these two olive trees setting on either side of the golden menorah? And so the Lord is showing him of something that's about to happen prophetically, but not for 3,000 years. I mean, are you serious? You know, sometimes people uh, get lost in prophecy. Somebody could be, let's say, uh, modern day prophetic voices like John Paul Jackson, or let's say Kim Clement, or let's say, you know, uh, um, Chuck Misler, or, or, or um, David Wilkerson, some of them that have passed on now. But they would get prophecies that may, have, may come to pass seven or eight years later. Some of the prophecies haven't come to pass yet at all. And uh, David Wilkerson's famous prophecy of 1973, where he mentions 41 things were going to happen in the body of Christ. At the time he preached that, they booed him. They, they, they thought he was insane. They, 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 came against, they came against him for it. They didn't like his prophecy. But guess what? Uh, 40 of those 41 things have come to pass. So some, but it took almost 40 years. So, and then there's prophecies. So you can't say, well, I, I know he prophesied that, but it still ain't happened yet. Well, guess what? It may not happen for a hundred years. And so you, you have to let God work through people. And then God's timing, not your timing. God doesn't care what your timing is. He's interested in getting his will done through us, through his people. So, all right, we got the golden menorah, and here's two olive trees standing on either side of it. And the Bible says, so he said, I, verse 4, So I answered, I spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. And uh, so, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. So, Solomon, the first temple we know, gets destroyed in 586 B.C., built by Solomon. But later after, and that's because the Babylonians overtook the temple and took the children of Israel captive uh, into Babylon, where they would stay for 70 years. And matter of fact, it was Jeremiah who prophesied they'd be there for 70 years. And on the 70th year, they were still in Babylon, but a new king had, uh, had risen. He was uh, King Cyrus, who was the king of Babylon, which included Persia. He was so he's known as the king of Persia. And he was reminded Daniel said, look, it's the 70th year. According to our prophet Jeremiah, we're to be released this year. And Cyrus said, okay, I'm releasing you. And he let him go. He sent him with gold and silver with, and all kinds of uh, money and workers and masonaries and, and carpenters. And he said, go to Jerusalem and rebuild your temple. And so he blessed them and sent them. So this word... When you're Zechariah, you're saying, okay, you're, you're wanting to rebuild the temple. I get that. But who are these two olive trees? And why is this important? And in verse 10, the Bible says, For who shall despise the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then said I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick, and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again, and said unto him, What be these two olive branches 
which threw the golden pipes, empty golden oil out of them. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? I said, No, my Lord. And then he answered. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. This is the prophecy that two witnesses would be sent in the last days to the city of Jerusalem to preach in the streets of Jerusalem. And the reason they're standing on either side of the golden menorah is because the third temple will be built and that golden menorah will be put inside the temple. So what the Lord was prophesying is in the last days, I'm sending my two witnesses. Now you say, Paul, I've heard about these two witnesses and they've never showed up and I don't know if they're going to show up. Just like everybody heard about uh, in Malachi prophesied that, 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 Elisha, that, uh, that Elijah would come and that he would uh, uh, be preaching. And everyone's saying, well, where is he? Where is he? Where's this prophet that was supposed to show up? And it was 400 years later when John the Baptist showed up, had the spirit of Elijah. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. You see, God prophetically prophesied John the Baptist for the first coming of the Messiah, the first coming of Jesus Christ. And Zechariah prophesies the two witnesses who will be the final witnesses of God just before the return of Jesus Christ. They will also be preaching the same time that the Antichrist will rise in the last days. So let's go there now. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 11. Now the Bible says, now you know who John is, the, the apostle, and John is shown a vision of the Lord while on the Isle of Patmos. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot Forty and two months, or three and a half years. And, uh, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, or twelve hundred and sixty days, which, folks, is three and a half years exactly if you follow God's calendar, the Jewish calendar, which is a 360 day calendar instead of 365. So, exactly. Uh, 1260 days, which is three and a half years. And it says that they will prophesy clothed in sackcloth. So they will be crying out. They'll be mourning. They will be um, in the streets of Jerusalem. And this, look at verse four. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. These are, here they are. So they have not come yet. I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you from the book of Revelation that there is an event still yet to come where the two witnesses of God, just like the arrival of John the Baptist, we're going to have the arrival of the two witnesses who will have tremendous power. They will not only preach, but they will perform great miracles, so much so that the world's leaders will hate them and will try to assassinate them and try to kill them. And they can't do it until God allows it. When I come back, we're going to dig deeper into this prophecy because you're living in it right now. I'll be right back. Every year we see records for hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, volcanoes, and floods. Is Earth spiraling toward human extinction? extinction. Our Climate Chaos webinar Climate examines chaos. all these alarming trends, why they're increasing, and what we can do about them. Plus, Paul Begley explains their end time significance. Now you can have the entire Climate Chaos webinar on DVD so you can explore the facts in more detail. Go to paulbegleyprophecy.com to order Climate Chaos on DVD. All right, all right, these two olive trees, these two witnesses of God, and they will show up on the scene. 
And the Bible says in verse 3, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy for 1,203 score days. For in other words, three and a half years, they will prophesy. It's the same three and a half years or the 42 months, which is three and a half years, that the Gentiles. So you have the first three and a half years, you see, you see these Gentiles are really basically all over the streets of Jerusalem. I really believe this re represents uh, really the Christian world. Uh, and the reason I say that, not that Jews aren't Christians, because there's many, 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 many uh, Messianic Jews who are, of course, Christians or followers of Christ, the Messiah. But if you look at today's world, when you go to Jerusalem, you have three religions of the apocalypse. You have Christians, Jews, and Muslims. The Islamic faith, they follow, of course, Muhammad. The Jewish people follow the Torah and the words of God looking for the Messiah. And the Christians follow Christ, Jesus, who they believe is the Messiah. So when you have these three religions converging upon one temple mount, just recently we've seen tremendous violence that broke out on Passover, which was also Good Friday, which was also Ramadan. And so everybody was converging on the same day, and you can imagine what happened. It's sad. You'd think everybody could just got along and did, and, and did their thing, but no. 153 people ended up in the hospital. 400 got arrested, primarily because uh, the Jewish people were being attacked by the Islamic people. And, and the Christians just basically walked around trying to figure out what was going on. Well, now we've got a situation where these two olive trees... These are the two witnesses. They're there. And the tension, of course, will be high, just like it is now. The only difference is the third temple will have been built because we started this chapter measuring the outer court, I mean, measuring the temple, and no outer court was built. Folks, I can tell you, I've been in Jerusalem 10 times. I've seen their plans they've, they've prepared to, to build the third temple. It has no outer court. It's a smaller version of Solomon's temple, and it doesn't have an outer court because they, they want to build it on the Temple Mount along, so that they don't disrupt the al Alask Mosque or the Dome of the Rock. And there's enough room up there for them to build their third temple. So it's going to happen. The Bible says it's going to happen. Matter of fact, the Antichrist, after three and a half years, will walk in there. He'll walk right into the temple and declare to the world that he is God. It's what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So God is saying that's going to happen, but so is my two witnesses. And look what it says here in the Word. Okay, so uh, these two witnesses are of the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in the same manner be killed. So the world will send assassins to try to kill these two preachers, because these guys have the power of God, and they're preaching that the Antichrist is just that, the Antichrist. They'll be preaching against the mark of the beast. They'll be preaching against the one world government. They'll be telling people to come to Jesus Christ, and they will not be loved, believe me. And as this goes on, uh, the Bible says these, these two have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will. Now there's two men who've done these things in the past. Moses, he turned the water into blood. It was one of the plagues of Egypt. And Elijah, who stopped the water, stopped the rain when he prayed, and for three years it didn't rain uh, because of the prayer of Elijah. Now there's also one other man who didn't die, uh, that's considered as possibly one of the witnesses, and that's the man by the name of Enoch. Um, but I think that the, if you look at what their capabilities were, it looks like Moses and Elijah. Either way, I don't think it's Moses and Elijah come back. I think it's the spirit of Moses and Elijah that's on these two men, just like 
the spirit of Elijah was on John the Baptist. So let's look this over. These two will have that kind of power. And the Bible says, and when they shall have finished their testimony or their preaching, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, that's Apollyon, which you can read about in Revelation chapter 9. This beast that come out of the bottomless pit, and the, the word Apollyon in the Greek means the destroyer, and he comes out of a place called Abaddon, when it, which in Hebrew means the place of destruction. And that's in Revelation 9-11. But it says that he ascends out of the bottomless pit, and he shall make war against them, the two witnesses, and he shall overcome them and kill them. So the devil himself, has. it takes the devil himself to kill the two preachers, the two olive trees, and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So that is Jerusalem. They will leave their bodies in the streets for three days. And the Bible said, and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. The whole world will show up. <clears throat> all the news media, all the internet, all of the uh, videos, and the whole world will be still watching and looking and figuring out what's going on. These two great prophets that have been preaching of the coming Jesus Christ, second coming of Christ. Look at them. They're dead. They're powerless. And the beast has taken over and the beast has walked into the temple and he's taken over Jerusalem and, and, uh, and the whole world will be just rejoicing. It says, and they, verse 10, and they shall dwell on the earth, shall rejoice over them. And they'll make merry, they'll celebrate, they'll send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And the reason they were tormented is because they wouldn't repent of their sins. You see, a lot of folks have a problem with Christianity or with the gospel, I should say, because they don't want to surrender to the gospel or submit to the gospel. But it's not like God's trying to force something on you. It's God's offering you the plan of salvation. He's offering you life. He's offering you blessings. He's offering you good. But people, instead of accepting the free gift, not only say no, many of them fight against it especially in the last days. The church will be persecuted. What's going on right now? The church will be hated. The, the Jews will be hated. Israel will be hated. I mean, this is exactly what's going on, folks. And uh, it will get worse. It won't get better. And so they get all excited. They're happy. They're sending gifts to each other. But the Bible said in verse 11, this is Revelation 11, 11, the Bible says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life, from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet with great fear fell upon them which saw them. Are you serious? The two witnesses get back up. They're alive. The whole world sees it. I mean, are you serious? You can imagine the reaction globally. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. This is the, <laughs> this might be the moment of the rapture for everybody, for all I know. I don't know. I know it's certainly the rapture for the two witnesses. And who knows uh, exactly how many people will go. But I know one thing, it will shock the world. And the Bible says that at the same hour, there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell in the earthquake and was slain of men 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. These two witnesses, these two olive trees. And here's the reason it was they, they were prophesied stand on either side of the menorah. Because the menorah was going to be back up on the holy mountain in the temple. And it's the two witnesses. I can see it in my mind. Two men preaching on either side of the temple. I see them in the streets of Jerusalem. I see them being watched around the world. Folks, they are, I believe, alive on the earth today. And so is the Antichrist. I'll be right back in just a moment. 
Every year we see records for hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, volcanoes, and floods. Is Earth spiraling toward human extinction? extinction. Our Climate Chaos webinar Climate examines chaos. all these alarming trends, why they're increasing, and what we can do about them. Plus, Paul Begley explains their end time significance. Now you can have the entire Climate Chaos webinar on DVD so you can explore the facts in more detail. Go to paulbegleyprophecy.com to order Climate Chaos on DVD. All right, all right. I mean, are you serious? The two witnesses, the olive trees, uh, the end days, the temple, the beast that will come out of the bottomless pit, the, the, the mark of the beast, all of these things. Guys, we're, we're close. We're close. And um, it's setting up. I mean, it is setting up. And when you see either a peace agreement, a confirmed, which could be the Abrahamic Accords that's already begun, when you see it being confirmed, you see that third temple being built, I'm telling you, you got to understand, you are in the absolute final seconds of prophecy. You're, Jesus is coming. Will you be ready? Now, if you don't see it because you die first, well, then judgment's coming. Either way, we're, we're so close to the coming of the Lord. I want to pray with you. I believe the best thing we could do right now is to pray for God to give us spiritual insight on how to live and, and to, to walk in His will. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you help us, Lord? We're praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ right now. Lord, we know that these witnesses are coming. They're yours. And we're not afraid of that. We know if you're in, we know you're in control. And we know that these are your prophetic words. Help us to understand the times that we live in. Help us to be about the Father's business. Help us to be uh, on fire for you and to join in on the Great Commission and be, and be involved in the coming of the Lord and, and to bring people into the kingdom of God, we pray. And Lord, also for those that are watching that aren't saved, God, I pray that you'll speak to their hearts and turn them around, Lord, as we repent of our sins and confess our sins and we call upon the name of Jesus and we ask, Lord, that you'll save us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Folks, I would love for you to come visit our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com and get involved. Get involved, you know. We've got some great DVDs. You know, I do a lot of webinars where I bring in great speakers, and we are doing some phenomenal work, some great webinars. One's called The Armies of the Antichrist, I think you would really love, and there's also uh, several others on the climate crisis and Planet X and what have you. I want you to just get into the prophecies and understand the time and the urgency, and of course, uh, you can check us out on YouTube. We're always there almost every day, keeping you up to date with current events. Thank you for watching this broadcast, and I look forward to being back with you next week right here on The Coming Apocalypse.